Every now and again, the antagonist of a story will devise a scheme that's actually really clever. Even if it doesn't work, the amount of effort the evildoer puts into it is impressive. Now, their actions may be deplorable, but you have to tip your hat to how well thought out some of these ideas actually are. So, with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with the 10 smartest villain plans in movies. Number 10. Syndrome's Omnidroid in The Incredibles in The Incredibles, Syndrome plots to launch his destructive robot, the Omnidroid, onto a heavily populated city. After he swoops in to destroy it, it's assumed that society will perceive him as a superhero. In most comic-themed stories, the villain has some sort of doomsday device which the hero ultimately destroys after exploiting an obvious weakness. However, Syndrome is fully aware of this. He's been obsessed with superheroes since childhood and knows how resourceful they are at uncovering weaknesses in weapons and doomsday machines. In fact, Syndrome used this fact to his advantage. For years, he hired superheroes under the guise of a mysterious benefactor and asked them to destroy the Omnidroid, which had supposedly gone rogue on an island. If the superhero emerged triumphant, Syndrome rebuilt the robot so it was immune to the way it was defeated. If the Omnidroid won, then that was one less superhero for Syndrome to worry about. By the time the insidious supervillain believed he had killed every superhero on Earth, only then did he release the Omnidroid on the public, which by this point was nearly invincible. Although Syndrome was beaten by a baby, it was still a masterfully orchestrated stratagem. Number 9. Hiding in plain sight in more ways than one in Inside Man Inside Man opens with a criminal called Dalton Russell claiming he pulled off the perfect bank robbery. Now every facet of Russell's plan is meticulously thought out. Forcing the hostages in the bank to dress the same way as the robbers so the police can't tell them apart is genius. He also sends recordings of Albanian chatter through the police radio waves so the detective on the case will waste hours to translate and decipher the messages unaware it has absolutely nothing to do with the robbery. But the masterstroke is the finale. Once the police have the bank surrounded, it looks like Russell is done. Instead of trying to escape, Russell takes a bag of priceless diamonds and seals himself inside the supply room behind a fake wall. One week later, he exits through the fake wall and walks out the front door. What makes Russell's success all the more satisfying is the fact that he bumps into the detective just before he leaves the bank. That detective was in the presence of the man he was assigned to arrest and he just let him walk out, oblivious of his true identity. Number 8. Irradiating Fort Knox's Gold in Goldfinger in Goldfinger, James Bond learns that a German tycoon called Auric Goldfinger aims to break into Fort Knox. Assuming that he plans to steal the vault's gold, Bond confronts the maniacal mogul and explains that his scheme won't work. Because there is nearly 13,000 tons of gold in the facility, there's no way Goldfinger could steal it all before the army intervened. But Goldfinger isn't going to steal the gold, he's going to irradiate it. His plan is to set off a dirty bomb in Fort Knox, making billions of dollars worth of gold inert for half a century. This would cause Goldfinger's own gold to skyrocket while the economy collapses. Even though most Bond villain plans are fantastical, this one is theoretically possible. In fact, an economist for the World Bank stated that Goldfinger's scheme is pretty solid. What's really interesting is that Goldfinger was intending to steal the gold in the novel and the original script. When the filmmakers realized the logistics of such a crime would be impossible, they altered Goldfinger's plan to make it more realistic. Number 7. Frankenstein Switches Bodies in Revenge of Frankenstein Throughout the Hammer series of Frankenstein, the authorities are constantly pursuing the titular scientist to put a stop to his barbaric and ungodly experiments. Because his ability to reanimate the dead is disregarded as pseudoscience, each film in the franchise revolves around Victor Frankenstein, trying to recreate his most famous experiment to prove his naysayers wrong. After living for over three years under the unsubtle pseudonym of Dr. Stein, Frankenstein is exposed and viciously attacked by the locals. When the police come to arrest him, they learn the deranged doctor has died from his injuries. After inspecting his body, they confirm that Victor Frankenstein is finally dead. Or so it seems. Before he perished, Frankenstein had his assistant transfer his brain into a new body, which was then reanimated with the same technology that brought his original monster to life. Now that the authorities have closed the case on Frankenstein, the mad scientist is free from all persecution, allowing him to live freely in his new form. He's also satisfied that he evaded the authorities by performing the exact same experiment that all of society condemned him for. Number 6. Palpatine's Order 66 in Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith 
As a galactic senator, Sheev Palpatine cultivated the persona of a politician with his people's best interests at heart. Little did anyone know that he was secretly reviving the Sith under the persona of Darth Sidious. As he claimed more and more political power, he performed atrocities behind the shadows, including putting hits on Queen Amidala, having Qui-Gon killed, and commissioning the construction of a moon-sized battle station. The reason why Palpatine's plan worked so well was because he knew when to act, and more importantly, when not to. When he was promoted to Supreme Chancellor, he didn't expose his true intentions. Even after he assembled a clone army, he didn't attack anyone publicly. Only after he turned Anakin to the dark side did he execute Order 66, forcing the clone troopers to instinctively hunt and wipe out all the Jedi. By the time Obi-Wan and Yoda learned Palpatine was the mastermind behind the Sith return, it was too late. He had too much power politically and physically. The Jedi were gone. It may have taken Palpatine years to initiate his plan fully, but it allowed him to rule the galaxy for decades. Number 5. Sauron's Failsafe in The Lord of the Rings most villains' downfall stems from the fact that they overestimate themselves. Even though criminal masterminds like Kingpin and the Joker are defeated time and time again, they always assume their next crime spree will succeed. They rarely consider the possibility that they are destined to fail. But one person who didn't suffer from this trope was the antagonist of The Lord of the Rings, Sauron. Because he led the largest army in Middle-earth and harbored the One Ring, the ruler of Mordor was the strongest being in existence. Despite his vast power though, Sauron wasn't arrogant and Enough to believe his plans could not end with failure. In the event of his death, the Dark Lord placed a failsafe on the One Ring so his soul would transfer to it. Despite the fact the ring could be destroyed in the fires of Mount Doom where it was forged, Sauron poured his dark magic into it so the wielder would be compelled to protect it under any circumstances. Even after his body was destroyed, this backup plan allowed Sauron to cheat death for 2,500 years. Number 4. Joker's Plans Within Plans in The Dark Knight in The Dark Knight, Joker proves his theatrical style of villainy isn't just for show. His crimes appear over the top to distract the masses from a deeper plan. After the maniacal clown gets arrested, police assume his reign of terror is finished. However, Joker allowed himself to be imprisoned to distract the cops while his goons kidnapped Rachel Dawes and District Attorney Harvey Dent and relocated them to two bomb-filled warehouses. When the explosives detonated, Rachel was killed and Harvey was left horrifically scarred. When Joker escaped, Batman managed to stop him before he committed any more atrocities. However, Bats failed again to realize that this showdown with the demented jester was a distraction. Joker alerts Batman that he encouraged Harvey to go on a killing spree earlier that day. After Batman tracks down his former friend, they fight, which indirectly leads to Dent falling to his death. Knowing it would destroy the city to learn that the respected DA was manipulated to commit murder, Batman takes the fall for the killings, turning him into a pariah. Joker may have failed to make Batman break his one rule, but he manipulated Dent so well that it forced the Cape Crusader to retire for eight years. Number 3. Thanos wins in Avengers Infinity War before the release of Avengers Infinity War, many cinema goers unfamiliar with Thanos were worried that the Mad Titan would prove a disappointment. What does he even do? He's just sat in a chair for years. Why doesn't he get the Infinity Stones himself if he wants them so badly? But when the film was released, it was clear that Thanos' inaction was because he was waiting for the perfect moment to obtain the cosmic gems. After he knew where all but one of them were, he still couldn't make a move since the Space Stone was heavily guarded in Asgard. But the instant Asgard was destroyed, he trapped the Power Stone first, knowing it would allow him to overpower anyone. He then located the Asgardian ship that housed the Space Stone and used its properties to teleport around the universe, allowing him to easily retrieve the others. Even though he had been preparing this plan for years, he attained all six stones in days and successfully wiped out half of all life in the universe with their power. The Avengers may have reversed his actions, but the ending of Infinity War proved to be the most humiliating defeat Earth's mightiest heroes had ever received. Number 2. Ozymandias' Preemptive Strike in Watchmen since the dawn of storytelling, antagonists have had a habit of monologuing their diabolical scheme in astounding detail, either to another character, the audience, or even their arch nemesis. The ancient Greeks did it, Shakespeare characters did it, heck, Bond villains explain their master plan to their mortal enemy with charts, models, and video footage. But no one monologues more than supervillains. It's regarded sacrilegious for a comic book baddie not to lay out their intentions in graphic detail. But the big bad of Watchmen, Ozymandias, did away with this 
this time on a tradition. After Night Owl and Rorschach learn their former comrade intends to kill millions to save billions, Ozymandias explains he will blow up key cities across the globe using Dr. Manhattan's radiation signature, framing Manhattan in the process. Because Manhattan's power is perceived as godlike, all nations would be forced to put their differences aside and ally against their common enemy. When the heroes threaten to expose him, Ozymandias points out that he initiated his plan minutes before they arrived. He then turns on the monitor, showing he's already triggered the Manhattan explosions, killing 15 million people. Even though the closing shot hints that Ozymandias will be implicated, the heroes still failed to stop him. Number 1. Simon's plan would have worked in Die Hard with a Vengeance in Die Hard with a Vengeance, Simon Gruber threatens to blow up a school in New York unless John McClane plays a cat and mouse game with him. Meanwhile, the FBI and the police force are desperately trying to locate which school harbours the explosive. What they don't realise is that Simon has sent them off on a wild goose chase while he breaks into the Federal Reserve Bank, which contains more wealth than any vault on Earth. Disguising his men as subway car repair workers, Simon breaks into the reserve through an aqueduct and hauls out $140 billion worth of gold in 14 dump trucks. After scripting this scene, the writer Jonathan Hensley was contacted by the FBI and asked how he knew the reserve's vault was beside a subway spur and could be accessed through an aqueduct tunnel. Hensley reassured the Bureau that he wasn't a criminal, but the agent he spoke to said someone could actually pull this off. He even had a meeting with other agents to strengthen the reserve security. That's right, the FBI thought that this plan was so foolproof that they thought the writer may have been a terrorist and had to update the vault's safeguards. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.